Brilliant. Evening. 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 You all right? Yes. Yes. This is Woodhouse, eh? Yes. Do you know what? I'm, I'm actually, do you remember, middle of November, I just happened to pop in on a Sunday evening and I had a couple of meetings. And you know what? You, you, I'm, I'm, I'm learning as I get older. Obviously not to Leslie's age. <laughs> but I'm learning as I get older that sometimes you've really got to be careful what you speak. I had a meeting he, on the Monday after being here on the Sunday evening with, a, with Hope Church in Rotherham. And I'm talking like I do. And they've all known me since I was a kid, like some of you probably know me. And, and there's a lot of, I won't say older faces, there's familiar faces out there. But, you know, I was in this meeting and, and I made a statement. And I said, look, guys, you know what we do as well. You know our heart to serve. You know our heart to do this. I said, I'm not an evangelist. I'm not a Bible teacher. And these words came from my mouth. And I said, and I will definitely never be a pastor. Because <laughs> that's just not me. And somebody in the room said, you know what? He stood up straight away and he said, you should never say that because God will challenge you on that. <laughs> and I, my answer to that was, well, good luck with that one. <laughs> On the Sunday, I was speaking in, in one of our local churches in Plymouth with Steve and Becky Bell, who you know, and, and we were doing a wow presentation and we spoke and we did that. And then at the end of it, Steve said, we'll go get some lunch. And, and I, I'd preached. And, and before we've even sat down for food, and, and for those of you know who do know me, you know I like my food. Before we've even sat down, Steve said to me, God's really, really spoke to me. I need to offer you the, the position of executive pastor. <laughs> and I've gone, <laughs> yeah, should we order food? <laughs> and do you know what, though? I think God's got a great sense of humour. And we had, a, we had a conversation, and I've gone, well, I don't know whether that fits with me. And, and I'm committed to, wow, this is my main, this is what God's called me to do. And I gave him then, I tried to talk him out of it, I really did. I gave him ten remits of why I couldn't do the job, because I need to be away this amount of time. I need to travel, I need to do this, I need to do this. And I'm thinking, there's no way he's going to agree to any of that. And I've gone, he's gone straight away, he's gone, yeah, 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 definitely. Steve, God's really spoke to me that this is, you're the person that I need. And I'm going, well, I've got my trustees as a backup now, and they're never ever going to release me two days a week to do this. And you know what? Every single one of them said, oh, it'd be great for you. It'll really expand you, it'll grow you, it'll develop. And don't you just hate it when some people are just right sometimes? <laughs> you know, I started a role down in Plymouth back in December, working alongside us. This is being streamed, isn't it? Is it being streamed? Oh, good. So I, he's given me the title of executive pastor. What is that about? <laughs> what is it like? Does he sit there with a the dictionary and go, right, I'm going to, we'll, put, we'll put that in front of pastor. So basically I'm in charge of, of developing teams, managing the teams, and bringing missions, vision, and serving Steve. Now, you know Steve, and that's, that's a challenge. <laughs> but you know what? I just see God's plan and God's purpose about how he's dovetailing everything together that we do with WOW to actually facilitate stronger partnerships, stronger as we move forward into different ways. Now, some of you might know, not know who we are. WOW is an organization that works predominantly well, we work predominantly with women and girls, and our whole ethos is to give a hand up, not a hand out. Now, Leslie said we've been doing this quite a while. We celebrate on the 1st of April, 20 years wow. since okay. we took over from my parents. And they did it for 25 years officially and probably five years unofficially. Yeah. So we're now into nearly 50... Let's do the maths on that. Yeah, we're doing quite a few years <laughs> of, of doing what we do. So we've learned a lot. But what I want to tell you on that journey is God's been so faithful. He's left it late. His timing isn't necessarily my timing. I'm a, I'm a, I like things done quickly. And sometimes we walk the journey, we take the steps of faith, and you think, right, we're going to do that. All we just need is the money. And sometimes you, we send it out in faith, and we did this this week. And I, I, I'm just sorry, last week we sent some money out in faith. And I've gone, okay, come on, God. Where are you? I need the money. Money's not in the bank. Rachel will be nagging me. And you know, for the first time I had to ring somebody this week and say, is there any chance? Uh, hardest phone call I've ever had to make. But you know what his answer was? Instantly. 
yes, we can do that. And actually, then he turned around and he said, thank you so much for asking me. There's not many people say thank you very much for asking me for money, is there? <laughs> but you know, God's plan and God's purpose to actually see wow change and continue to change the lives of the women that we're working with is, is really exciting. Yeah. It scares me, if I'm honest, sometimes. You know, um, I was in Uganda just a few months ago, and we took a media guy with us who's produced us some media, and I'm going to show you one of the, a couple of clips in a minute. But for those of you who don't know what WOW is about, it's about giving the women a hand up, not a hand out. It's about educating. It's about training and equipping. It's about resourcing them so they can provide for their families. For years, we've seen lives transformed. But what we want to do is actually see them grow and develop and take steps towards being self-sustainable. Because who knows where things will go, but actually what we want to do is create a, a culture where they're not looking to me for all the answers. And you know what? And this is where I'm going with this. In order for me to take this role that I've taken in Plymouth, I had to, Leslie knows that I'm, I'm all about, con and Rachel will tell you if she was here, I'm all about control and getting things done. And I've had to take a step back from some of the projects. But you know what? In order to take a step back, what I've done is create room for people to step up. And the partners that we've got in, in Uganda have stepped up incredibly. I grin my head off when we're having the Zoom calls because I just cannot believe that this lady called Agnes, who would never really speak, who was very, very submissive to her husband, all of a sudden is leading the project. She's not just leading the project, she's directing the project and taking it to places that I wouldn't take it. But actually, she's really stepped up and she's going far. She's, she's caught the heart and the vision of what we do. And I'm going to show you some media. And it's the first one is, is the Joyce Media. And this is one of the ladies, just one of the ladies, who's on our project. By name, I am called Aikoru Joyce. My husband died of HIV and AIDS. During my husband's burial, after burial, everything was taken. I was in it as I am. With the little children, they were all in this size. So from there, I was just praying, 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 praying. And then prayer said to me, Lord, I have been struggling also, eh? looking for school fees, looking for food, digging myself. And then the house which I was left in, that is fallen. Yeah, it is fallen. And then from there, I also struggled to build this small one where I'm now sleeping in. Our father is there. Whatever he promised for me, all my needs will come. When Wao came in, out of that preaching, counseling, and giving something to us. I really felt consoled. I felt consoled because I was getting my food, I was getting soap, food, beans, sugar, something good for me. Eh? Something good really to help. It helped me so, so, so much. I woke up around five in the morning. I finished my work, as you have seen here. The challenge is, after finishing all this work, I begin thinking, where will I get food? And where will I get money? Because from first to thirty, it is not easy. It is not easy. I really thank you people for your support. 
since we began up to now, you are with us. May Almighty Father reward you abundantly and you will take our greetings from Africa, Uganda, Rua, to UK people. You know, Joyce is an incredible lady. We had to get up at 4.30 in the morning to go and get that media and it, it was just one of the most incredible experiences I've ever done. And you hear the heart of Joyce and actually that's why we do what we do. You know, whatever my father wants me to have, he will give me. Wow. Having lost her husband, her house fell down and she continued to have that level of faith where she, she's, and, and now Joyce, and I love this, she now is part of the choir in the church. She beams, you know, when we were doing Sunday worship, she was just beaming at me the whole time, just smiling. She now leads one of our clusters. So she's having influence over 23 women in her cluster. And actually what she does, she shares the experience that she's gone through to actually inspire the other women. Yeah. I can go and I can do what I do, but actually how powerful is that yeah. for them to actually learn from somebody in their culture who's been through the circumstances, yeah. whose husband died of AIDS, yeah. who's had to grow, bring up her children on her own, lost the house, all of those things. You know, culturally in Uganda, that if your husband dies as a widow, you're brought to the local council. And the local leader, chief of that local council, he will decide whether it is your, the woman's fault if her husband died. If it's her fault and he's decided it's her fault, every single one of her assets is taken. Whether it's goats, chickens, house, whatever, she's stripped of everything and she's kicked out of that village. Joyce was one of those women who lost everything. And you know, she smiles constantly now. She's an incredible inspiration. And we do what we do because we want to see whatever we do, whether we feed, whether we clothe, whether we educate, whatever we do, it's because we want to tell them about Jesus. Yeah. We want to tell them that God loves them, that he sent his only son to die for them. We want to keep it as simplistic as we can, but see their lives transformed. And we do that in multiple ways. And one of the most successful ways that we've done that in Uganda is we've introduced something called micro business. Such a simple concept. You'll see a media clip in a minute and they refer to it as VS, VSLA, Village Saving Loan Association. It's regulated by the government and you'll see one of our project leaders, Helen, explain it in a minute. But what we've got there is we've instigated something that is giving them a hand up, that empowers the women to do micro business, to buy and to sell, to grow their vegetables. So we're not paying for their kids to go to school, they're paying for their kids to go to school. We're not paying for the food parcels, they're able to buy their own food yeah. parcels. Do you know what that does? That restores their dignity. That gives them hope that they can do it for themselves. If we can show that media clip of Helen, that's great, thank you. I'm called Helen. Uh, my title at WOW is uh, admin. I'm an administrator, also the finance officer. And then I also handle the VSL part, that is the village local savings for the women, the village local savings. It's regulated by the government and uh, it's operational in all the villages. Uh, the community around they are going through a tough time. Uh, the VSLA, how, we, how it works with our women, we, we get a trainer, someone from the bank. Yeah, we get them to the field, meet the women who are, who are able to do some business for themselves. So they give them skills, they train them on business skills, ideas. So they come up with their, their, their business plans. So we give that money, they borrow that money from the office. So we give them the amount, and uh, they start from as low as a hundred shillings, yeah. And it depends according to your enterprise, the one you want to do. 
Then after borrowing, you keep on running, we give you a target of 10% interest. Every month, you bring it and we save it for you. So as you keep on running the business, we monitor how the business grows and we see into it, do you need more capital perhaps? Then we, we see how to top up for you the capital. So it's an every woman, that we do that every month, we follow them up, the interest they bring, we save for them. After a year, we give back to them. Then we also sit down with them, we plan, maybe she had a plan of building a hut, or she had a plan of buying goods and do something. So we are able to help support her. We have two ladies from cluster B specifically. We have uh, Christine, the, the soup lady. After I gave her the capital, she was so committed. She boils the soup and people buy it. So she was able to save enough money from that. Then she was able to build for herself a house actually a two-room house yeah we went there we opened it ourselves we prayed for her then she entered in the house and we have uh, esther esther was able to buy a grinding mill for herself that generates daily income for her she feeds the children she's so excited life was very hard for her until she received that money she was able to buy that it is operational today so she does the grinding at home. People come, the neighborhood comes to her, and she is able to earn like around 10, 15,000 per day. She feeds the children through that every day. She gives them a hand up because they are able to, 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 to survive on their own. Like they cannot be depending much on someone just giving them, giving them all the time. They are able to sustain themselves alone through the VSLA. So it's able to impact them. Some of them are able even to send children to schools, the government schools, which are not expensive. They are able to send them out to school. The, the, the VSL has helped them. So in such a way that they are able to, to stand, to stand and sustain them, their lives. Business scheme, it has helped them a lot. And also saving scheme, as also they are, they are able to learn a saving scheme that they can use, they are not like I, I work, then I eat it all today. They are able to think about tomorrow, future plans, able to save them some money to see that they can do something tomorrow. You know, the whole concept is really to give and empower yeah. the women to do it for themselves. Yeah. You know, we talk about why we do what we do, and I can talk about that all evening. But actually one of the biggest things that we have to change with the women is their perspective. Yeah. We have to change because they've been spoken to, they've been abused, they've been neglected, they've had negativity all of their lives and you have that spoken over you constantly, it starts to bring you down. Yeah. And what we've seen is them, them change their perspective on, on life to actually start to believe that they can. Yeah. And actually when you start to see these women start to believe that they can, the influence that they have in their local community where the clusters meet, we've started to see other people come in to the, to, the, to the weekly VSLA meetings that they hold and they're coming to the meetings and actually getting saved. So it's having such an impact that people are wondering what's going on. They're coming to see what's going on. The word of God is spoken and we're starting to see people saved as a result of it. So it's, it's, it's started to really gather some momentum. So we're so excited by that. and you you. you you heard the figure of 100,000. So that's 100,000 shillings, and to convert that into UK, that's 25 pounds. So we invest into the women a sum of 25 pounds, and we have clusters of 10 to 15 women, and by the time we train them up and do what we do, it costs us about 750 quid to set up a micro-business scheme. And you talk about income, and, and we talk about actually getting the women to understand that actually to not just live for today, but to plan for tomorrow. The word that I used was perspective. And I'm going to bring some very, very quick thoughts now. And if you wanted a title for my message, it's, it's what's your perspective? What's your position and what's your posture? If you've got your Bibles, and it, it, hopefully it's going to come up on the screen. And, and for the sake of time, I'm just going to read a few of the verses. But you go to Luke 13, 10 to 17, where it talks about Jesus healing on the Sabbath. One Sabbath day, as Jesus was teaching in the synagogue, he saw a woman who had been crippled with an evil spirit. 
She had been bent over double for 18 years and was unable to stand. Stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. Then he touched her and instantly she could stand straight. How she praised God. But the local leaders in the charge of the synagogue were indignant that Jesus healed on the Sabbath. There were six days of the week working, he said to the crowd. Come on those days, don't heal on the Sabbath. But Jesus replied, you hypocrites, each of you on work on the Sabbath. You untie your ox or your donkey from its stall on the Sabbath and you lead it to water. This dear woman is a daughter of Abraham who has been held in bondage by Satan for the last 18 years. Isn't it right that she be released even on the Sabbath? We talk about perspective. And actually this, this nameless woman, her perspective of life would have changed 18 years ago. Her perspective would have changed, but actually her physical being, her physical way that she, she was stood changed dramatically. She'd gone from standing up straight to being bent over double, being in pain, and, and that's debilitating in itself. But then you've got to understand the culture that actually she would have been isolated. She would have been pushed away, just like so many of the women that we work with. She would have been ostracised inside. She would have been treated as, as unclean. Because actually, if going back to Bible times, if, if you were seen to have an illness, you would have been seen that you'd sinned against God. So this woman would have struggled with her physical ailments. ailments. She would have struggled with all the ailments that she had, and then she would have also struggled with her position in society. The women in Uganda that we work with, the women in Ethiopia have the same battle today that because of culture, they struggle with the same problems. Getting them to change their perspective, to change the way that they think is probably one of the hardest things that we do. We did some perma garden training. I'm sure I've said this story here before. And, and the perma garden is a four meter by three meter plot that they can grow crops on, that they can s put food on the table for their children, but they also generate income to actually sell by selling the crops. And it's, it's a very, very simple process, but they've never seen it before. When we did the training five years ago, day one, you, they, it was like they were teenagers. They're st like, they just weren't interested. You could see them just sort of like doing the whole really weren't interested. We got to day two and they started to see the, the perma garden start to take place. And you could see them starting to engage a little bit, but not a great deal. We get to day three and then we've shown them the composting and we've shown them and we're talking about the benefits of what it can do. And we got to day four and, and they're starting to engage a little bit. And you think, well, okay, we're getting some momentum here. This is good. We got to day five and we said, right, we want you to go get some tools and we want you to create them. We had a fight as the women saw the benefits and they literally were fighting to get the tools so they could go and build their own perma garden. We're five years in that line and you will see, if you were to come with me and go around a room, you'll see these perma gardens where the women are growing crops and putting food on the table and generating income. The culture has a massive influence. You know, it says in Romans 12 too, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That woman in the story had to change the way and change her circumstances to actually move forward. She had to, to almost change her perspective completely, not physically, but also of what people thought about her. Dealing with the baggage, you know, nobody likes to be talked about, but I can imagine that woman walking down the street, people crossing over the road and ignoring her. But she chose to reposition herself. She chose to do something about it. This nameless woman, she chose because she'd heard about this guy called Jesus. It was on Facebook, it was on Instagram, it was all over the internet and she'd heard about this guy who was travelling around Jerusalem who was healing people, who was seeing lives transformed and she just thought, Actually, could I? Could I just go and see and, and maybe just hear from Jesus? And actually what she did, she chose to go to the synagogue on a Sabbath. Now that synagogue would have been a busy place. It would have been a busy place without Jesus being there. 
And then the day that she was going, Jesus was going to be there. That place would have been packed. What it doesn't say is about, is that woman's journey to get to the synagogue. Can you imagine for 18 years being bent over double? All she'd ever seen for 18 years is people's dirty feet. But she made her way because she knew, she knew that by repositioning herself, she was potentially putting herself in a position where she could hear from Jesus. That journey to the synagogue and, and getting there, it would have been congested, like I say. But she, just getting there wasn't good enough. She then decided, actually, think about this. She's bent over double. She wouldn't even, your hearing's affected. What you're seeing is affected. She wanted to actually get to the point where she could, and you can imagine her just stepping forward bit by bit. Then all of a sudden, Jesus calls her out and says, G come forward. Woman, come here. I want to pray. And the transformation, all of a sudden, the woman who had been ignored was suddenly at the centre of that room. Everybody was looking at her. For 18 years, that woman had carried resentment. She was bitter. She was angry. She'd been in pain. But she actually chose to position herself to get into the environment where Jesus was there to, to have a life transformed. Woman, thou art loosed from thy infirmity, it says in the King James. I love the King James Version because it says, Woman, thou art loosed from thy infirmity. And when you look, getting technical here now, who'd have thought I'd ever do this? In the Greek. <laughs> but it says in the Greek, the, the Greek translation of loosed means to be liberated. What does it say on all of our literature? Liberating families and communities from poverty. So when we talk about liberating, she was liberated from her infirmities. She was liberated. And, and then Jesus does something that, again, was culturally unacceptable. He reaches out and touches her, which would have made Jesus technically ceremonial and clean. But never wanted to stick to the rules. He reached out. He touched her. And this is the bit that I love. Can you imagine 18 years, bent over double, looking at people's toenails, looking at dirty feet, and all of a sudden, as she straightened up, she stood, and the very first thing she did was look into the eyes of Jesus. The very first thing, to look directly into the eyes of Jesus and to have her life completely transformed. Yeah, like... Can you imagine that joy? And then you've got the joy robbers going, oh, but you shouldn't have done it on a Sunday. <laughs> Whenever there's a breakthrough, there will always be pushback. Whenever you are breaking new ground, there will always be some negativity. Whenever you're stepping forward, there will always be someone trying to push you back. You know, but actually, by repositioning herself, she received her total healing. Her posture was completely changed. We talk about perspective, we talk about position, and we talk about posture. And, and for the women that we're working with, with WOW, we're seeing their lives transform. The biggest thing that we have to get the women to do is understand that they can make the difference. That we can teach them, we can educate them, we can give them all the training that they need, but until they decide to do it for themselves, they'll never get anywhere. It's that old analogy of you can draw a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. I can teach Hannah to do certain things and, and to... Hannah's my daughter, she's 24 years old, and, and she said... She said, oh no, this has been streams. If you ever watch this, I'm going to be in so much trouble. She tells me now how to drive. <laughs> oh my goodness, I went to Truro with her the other day, and she's telling me how to drive. Dad, why are you doing that? Why are you doing... I'm okay, going, Hannah, you've been driving now for... Four, five years? I've been driving for a lot, lot longer than that. Yeah. And you're telling me. But you know what? Her perspective of it is she knows it. And actually she's desperate to share that information with me. We talk about transformation. And you might say, well, how does that work for WOW? It, it's, 
churches like you partnering with us, it's individuals like you partnering with us to actually make this, this possible. And you go, well, it's going to cost a load of money. It doesn't cost a lot of money. You've heard me say that, that actually 30 pounds, 25 pounds will sponsor a woman to actually get onto a micro business. We were there um, in September. And there's a lady who's been featured on the newsletter. She, her name is Beatrice. If you look on our website, you'll see pictures of her. And we were there. Beatrice is 67 years old. And we went into the room that she sleeps on on the project. And, and it, sometimes you just sometimes you, you, you just got to look at things with a different... I just looked and I thought, where does she sleep? And I looked on the floor and there were literally rags and little bits of bamboo that she was sleeping on. And I said, well, could we not? And, and they said to me in the past, I've asked a question in the past, and they said, it's okay. That's what she would do. We won't buy her a mattress because it invested, it would get infected with bugs and da 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 And they gave me the issue. Huh? And I looked this time, and I said, can we just not go buy her a bed? So as a team, there was eight guys. We went down, bought a bed, bought a mattress, bought some sheets, bought some pillows, did the whole caboodle. Cost us 60 pounds to buy everything. We took it off the roof of the van and we carried it in and we set it up. And Beatrice was working at the bottom of the, the, the wow land and she's 67 years old. And as she came back up, she was dirty, she was covered, she'd been working hard. And she walked into her room and she saw the bed. And it was like somebody just turned the power on in it. It was, honestly, if I could have videoed it and showed you it, it's absolutely, she was grinning. She was bouncing on the bed. She was lying in the middle of the bed. She was starfishing. She was doing all of it. She was so excited. And you know what? The reality of me that, that hit me. 67 years old and she'd never slept in a bed. And it cost 60 pounds. You know, we're so blessed in, in yeah. so many ways that we don't fully appreciate it. There's a statistic that, that shocks me. You saw Joyce pumping water from a bore well. It's estimated that 40, 40 billion hours every year, women in sub-Saharan Africa pump water. 40 billion. Can you imagine that? Not turning the tap on, cleaning your teeth, making a cup of tea, actually carrying the water. I try carrying. There is footage of this and, and hopefully will never ever surface <laughs> because it's one of those moments you go, oh no. I actually tried to put one of those water containers that Joyce carried on her head. I tried to put one on my head. It looks so easy, doesn't it? Yeah, you try doing it. I put a 25, oh, it was heavy. And then I suddenly had the realization that because my hands were above my head, my t-shirt had pulled up, everyone's got the video out and they're videoing me. And my, my, my belly's out and, I've got the, and I'm doing that. And all of a sudden, it just took the slightest deviation and all of a sudden what was 25 litres of water was then 20 litres of water all down me. But you know these women what they go through on a daily basis just to do life is hard. Yeah. You know and as a church you've partnered with us for so long and actually tonight I want to say thank you. Thank you for partnering with us. Thank you Leslie and Andrew for your support and for Marcus and Sean for, for continuing that. What we want to do is continue to grow. We want to continue to have impact into these women's lives. Continue to actually tell them the simple truth that God loves them. Yeah. Something we, we all know, we all understand, but actually for some of these women, and to actually get them to understand that they're of value, that they're of worth, that this guy who, who, who gets on a plane and comes out periodically, he cares for them. You saw a picture of, of Esther. You heard the story of Esther with the grinder. Yeah, she, there, there was, um, Helen was saying about it. Esther, three weeks ago, fell over and broke her arm. Three weeks ago. We've had a medical day and she didn't say anything. So we've just had medical days for all the women. And they, they found, obviously noticed that she'd broken her arm. They had to take her to hospital, which a Ugandan hospital would be an interesting experience. They had to re-break her arm in order to set it. You know, we've had a, one of those weeks where we've had a few challenges. We've had Esther with the arm. There's one of the other lady who's got cancer in the shoulder. So do we face challenges? Yes, we face challenges. But actually we're facing those challenges because what we're starting to do is see a difference in the lives of the women and there's pushback. 
But actually we're excited and we know that God has a plan. We know that God has a purpose. We're excited about how things are going to progress in Uganda, how things are progressing in Ethiopia. You know, the, the projects that we're doing, and, and, and there'll be a report coming out in the next few months, or next week, next few weeks even, when Rachel's written it. She's very slack. <laughs> I can say that because she's not here. And she, I know she won't listen to me, so... Uh, <laughs> why, would she listen, why would she watch me streaming? She doesn't listen to me when I'm in the house. So... Uh, the report that we've got, and we've got all the reports coming in for the project, I want to encourage you that actually God's moving. We're seeing lives transformed. We're seeing kids coming to know, get closer to Jesus. We're getting them to start seeing their families have influence on. We've just repurposed one of the projects in Philippines. And we've taken it and we've moved it completely. And, and we've had meetings over the last few Saturdays. They've, they've been doing team meetings about, actually, what I've learned, it's not about what I think we should do. The most important thing that I've learned is actually to sit with the women and sit with the families and go, what can we do to serve you? What can we do to facilitate you to generate income? And I've gone, taken two days out of it for me in Plymouth. And it's funny how you suddenly start to realize it has reduced my time. So I've had to take that step back. And like I said earlier, the women, the project leaders have really stepped up. And, and the project in Philippines, oh my goodness. They're coming back with so many different ideas about income generation that is beyond anything I would have suggested. And we've connected with this, and this is God's plan and God's purpose. We've connected one of the ladies who, whose husband works for an, a, a hotel network, and it's a big hotel network in Philippines. And they are prepared to sow money into the WOW project from the Philippines in order to do what we do. God's plan and God's purpose as we take steps forward. It's incredible. Yeah. So thank you for everything you do. I'm now going to hand back over to Marcus. Bless you.